what's going on everybody this is Justin with me myself and dice and welcome to the mini painting desk today we are going to be painting hatchet from Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion this is a tutorial series that we started with the Red Guard if you have not watched that episode watch that because we're gonna be building off of some of the techniques that we use there including layering and thinning your paints the first technique we're going to look at is called Zenithal Priming. If you look at Hatchet here, you will see that he has shades, under his horns especially, you'll see that he goes from a white to a black. There are many videos online on how to Zenithal Prime, and I encourage you to check one of those out, but the simple gist is that you prime the model in black, let it dry, and then you spritz it with white from above. This simulates the highlights and shadows that you would get from a directly overhead light source like the sun. This type of priming is very important for the way we're going to approach this model because we're going to thin our paints even more than we did with the red guard and we're going to let the undercoat priming shadows and highlights do the work for us. art and this previously painted character of Hatchet, he's very monotone, very just brown. And so we want to add some more dimension to that so he pops on the table. I do want to stay true to the art and at least the darkness and mystery and the brown tones of this character. So we're going to thin a dark brown, in this case Vallejo model color chocolate brown, down really thin. You want to be able to see the highlights and the shadows of our undercoats shining through so that when this dries the darkest areas where the white primer did not hit looks black and this will provide a great base for us to highlight up from. So the areas I am trying to cover with this color right now are the cloak and don't forget the sides and the front underneath his legs and in between his arms and his tunic and I want to cover the hat in this color. I've put pretty much two thin layers on everywhere. Don't forget the underneath of his hat. I only did one thin layer there. We want it to read as black. And I also want to do his trousers in this color.
I wanted to take some of the richness down so that it gets a little more of a wear and tear worn look and looks a little older. So I'm taking some Agrax Earthshade and painting it all over the brown areas. But then going back and specifically pushing it and pulling it into the recesses in the cloak. For his face and hands, I am taking Vallejo model color black gray and thinning it down very thin since his skin is already primed black. I want it to reflect a little bit of light and not be completely lost in the darkness. So we're painting all of the skin this color and then we can highlight up from there. I'm also using this color on his horns to match everything else on the skin and the thin layer is going to give the gray a deeper shade on the underneath where it's black and a very much lighter shade on the top where it was primed white. So a lesson in browns, brown usually hues up to a yellow brown a red brown or a green brown those are usually the hues we think of when we think of a lighter brown i decided to go with a orange brown reddish brown here in vallejo model color calvary brown which is one of my favorite colors and i created a gradient you're definitely going to want to use a wet palette for this you can put a wet napkin in a small lid of a container and then put a piece of parchment paper over it this will help keep your paints hydrated and allow you to mix a very thin gradient between your lowest color and your highest color. In this case, the chocolate brown and the cavalry brown. And you can pick the hues in between to build up your highlights. Most people will build up at least three highlights with your lower tone, the mid-tone of your gradient, and then the pure color that you put down on top. Here I'm already on my second highest color, and I'm going to do two more after this. Painting less and less area as I go along, until finally when I'm just at the cavalry brown, I am only painting the highest parts of his shoulders and the highest folds of his cloak. The typical rule is that smaller areas need less progression of highlights, so once I hit kind of that middle of my gradient, I use that to highlight the brim of his hat and the very top of it. I'm moving up to my next to last highlight here, which is mostly the Calvary Brown with a little bit of chocolate brown mixed in. And again, I'm avoiding all of the recesses and keeping it focused on the brightest areas of the model, which would be the areas that were hit with white when we Zenithal primed it, and areas that I might want to draw attention to, like the edges of the front of his cloak.
we're here at the highest highlight, the straight cavalry brown, we're going to hit the top of his shoulders, the most raised areas of his cloak, including the edge of where it comes together. The biggest advice I can give you is on those raised areas, use the side of your brush and that will help you not spill over into the recesses. You can really see here the power of the Zenithal highlighting and the power of a gradient with two simple colors and taking our time and going in between with very thin layers you can see the dynamic highlights and shadows that we have going on in this cloak. With that Zenithal highlight in place we could have stopped with a base coat, a mid-tone, and then a highlight here and it would look good on the table. So feel free to stop whenever you feel the most comfortable according to your abilities. But you can see that this really sells the dynamic lighting of a situation, whether it be the dark alley, the bright sunlit field, or a dank dark dungeon. There is a sense of vibrancy going on and a sense of life to the model, simply because you took the time to add some shadows, midtones, and highlights to it. So we did one thin coat of the cavalry brown on his trousers. I'm going to hit a mid-tone on that gradient and this is why a wet palette is a must with this project. I'm going to hit everything but the hardest to reach places on those trousers with somewhere in the middle of that gradient. And then I'm going to grab the cavalry brown and I'm going to highlight the front of the pants and the fold. And everything else will just drastically fall into shadow. Again, smaller area needs less highlights. Moving on to his tunic, I wanted to give some contrast between the orange red of his cloak and something with his tunic. So I'm going more towards the yellow end of the spectrum to give a complementary color. So I'm using Vallejo model color Okra Brown.
for my first highlight color. I grabbed Citadel's Zemesi Desert here. It's just a slightly lighter color of what we just used. It was good for highlighting. You can also add white to your original color and lighten it up slightly. I move on to Vallejo model color Pale Sand, which is one of my favorite off-whites. It's an off-white with a warm yellowish tint to it, so a very, very pale yellow. And I'm using this mixed into the Zamari Desert just to darken it a tad so that it's not too big of a jump from the color underneath to the highlight. And this will be my final highlight. I'm highlighting just the tops of the folds and the edges of the tunic. So now that I've established my two main colors, I wanted to tie them together with something in the middle. So I go for Vallejo model color, flat earth, any kind of neutral brown here would look really good on the boots and the belt. This will bring everything closer to the brown that's in the art and make it all a cohesive unit that reads brown. Again, you're going to want to use really thin coats on this and make it a very transparent color. We can let the Zenithal highlights work really well here, giving the highlights a very much lighter tone and the shadows giving a much darker tone to this one brown. With the theme of tying everything together, I also wanted to use this same color on all of the little handles and grips on all of the many axes he has hidden all over his body. I decided for his quiver, I guess it's called, that holds all of his axes, I didn't want to introduce any new colors. Instead, I would use colors we had already used and keep it simple. So for the main body of the quiver, I'm using that same flat earth. And then for the straps, I will go back and use a little bit toned down 
of that Calvary Brown. You also don't want to forget the strap that comes across his chest and holds that in and then goes under his cloak under that brooch. And here's where I mix just a touch of that chocolate brown into that Calvary red and get a little bit higher than the mid-tone of that gradient and use it for the straps just so it doesn't blend completely in with the colors in his cloak. Here I'm going straight into that Calvary Brown and just doing a little edge highlight on the top of the straps and the top of the quiver. Now the Zenithal highlights are doing a fantastic job on the flat earth areas, but if you want to push it a little bit more, I am taking the messy sand that we had earlier and mixing it just a little bit into the flat earth and creating a highlight color with that. And then I'm going back and getting a little bit of the flat earth and wet blending the line of my highlight back together. And then I'll add a little bit more and do it again. The area that you want to concentrate on in the boot is going to be kind of the front of the boot and definitely on top of the foot. But most importantly, I think, is that knee pad area of his boot where it comes up. This will add a little bit of definition and make it pop out against that darker trouser background.
Now to highlight his skin, I'm going to use Vallejo model color French Mirage Blue, which is sort of a neutral gray with a tint of blue in it. I've thinned this down and I'm going to paint the tops of his hands and drag it just across the details on his face. Around his jawline, there's sort of a beard and then the tip of his nose. And this is just gonna bring out some of those features. They're very shallow and hard to bring out. This will just help him pop a little bit more. I'm going to use the same color to paint the back halves of those shafts in his quiver and the brim of his hat. In the art, it's gray and it just gives a break in the color scheme. Now his horns technically have some ridges in them, but again, the detail is really shallow. So I attempted to dry brush this same French Mirage Blue onto the horns. It didn't really bring out the texture as much as I wanted it to, but it was an easy way to get the highlight colors on the horns. So I now add some Vallejo game color, dead white to the gray, which has become my favorite white to use. It's less chalky and seems to go on better. And I'm brushing against the grain, trying again to bring out the texture of the ridges in his horns. It does a little bit better, but I'm focusing more on the tips as well. Just the highest highlights. For all of his axes, I want those to seem dangerous while he seems mysterious and just to give a really nice pop on the model. So I'm using Vallejo Model Air Steel. You also don't want to forget to grab the belt buckle and the clasp up on top of his shoulder where the strap is held together. We also don't want to forget the bottoms of the handle sticking up from his quiver, so give those a nice brush of that same metallic that you're using. Again, just to tie everything together, I use Citadel Nolan Oil, which is a black wash, and any black wash will do, just to lightly go over the metallic areas and tone them down just a tad. But really, I pulled it out to bring out the detail in the buckle and the clasp. There's a little bit of detail there. It's very shallow, but if you put some black wash on it, it'll pop. For extra credit, use the known oil on some of the flat earth areas 
making little strokes here and there and it'll give the illusion of having a few more folds and some wear on the boots. You can also use it to darken the recesses on the back of the quiver. Slather some non oil on top of those hilts and it'll look less like a blob of silver and more like individual weapons. Then take your silver and just barely touch the raised areas of all of the silver parts and this will add a highlight back to it after the non oil. Everything's looking more than tabletop ready, but I was still bothered that I didn't have those ridges in his horns showing very well. So I took some of that French Menage Blue and just kind of raked it across the horns to make little lines that suggest that there's ridges there. Now to finish any model, you're going to want to paint the base. I'm choosing to paint this one black and I'm using Vallejo Mecha Color, which is a newer line from Vallejo that seems to not wear and scratch as easily. And I'm using that on most of my bases now. Now, as we did with the Red Guard, we're going to base this model if you want to. And I'm going to be using Geek Gaming Scenics ready-made mix of arid grasslands. You simply paint some PVA glue, your white school glue, onto the model of the base and then dip and shake off the excess. We're going to go an extra step here and we're going to add army painter grassland tufts to it. So I'm just going to add one just for some visual interest. You see me playing with it trying to place it before I put some glue on it and place it down. And then I'm going to get a nice scenic rock to place near it just to help bring everything together. And there he is, our hatchet character for Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion, ready to rip and tear through some enemies. As you can see, this doesn't have to be very hard. We can use very few colors. And being more monotoned, you can really focus on practicing some layering, practice some highlighting, and you can use that Zenithal highlighting to your advantage to make a more dynamic model. I hope you have found this tutorial helpful. There is a link down in the description below for our Facebook group. Post pictures of your hatchet that you've made. I would love to see what you've done. If you did find this video helpful, then please think about hitting that like, smashing that subscribe, and tapping that bell icon so you don't miss any of the videos that we post. We are going to go through the other two characters in the Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. Cephalofair was nice enough to send me extra copies of these for these painting tutorials for you, the community. And once we are finished painting these minis, we will be doing a giveaway to one lucky subscriber. We'll announce the contest in the episode 5 of the Jaws of the Lion walkthrough, so stay tuned for those. And as always, thanks for watching, and until next time, happy gaming.